Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number three from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P3 paper from the International A Level at Excel exam. This question here is about uh, trig identities and it says three part A using the identity for cosine A plus B prove that cosine 2A equals 2 cosine squared A minus 1. Now, most of us should have by now memorized this particular um identity this in edexcel this identity is not given to us but we need to use it a lot in p3 and p4 especially when we're doing things like integration and differentiation and so on um so it's an identity that we should know um you know we should have memorized anyway but here they're asking actually for us to prove it which is something that i normally show the students how to do when we've got a question involving this in case they've forgotten how or well, forgotten this identity suppose that you've mixed up with the identity is it one minus two cosine squared a or is it two cosine squared a minus one you're not sure whatever so it's a good idea for you to know how to do this um anyway right so sometimes in these type of questions when we have to use this and we're not asked to prove it but we have to use it i normally do try to show you how we derive it so it can be derived from this identity and this identity is something in the formula sheet so i've got it ready prepared from before so this is taken from the formula sheet, okay? And if we look at the identity for cosine A plus B, which would be the one that this is referring to, we can then apply that to cosine A plus B. So we say, okay, cosine A plus B, according to this identity, is identical to... Now, if you notice, the one that says A plus on top and minus underneath... On here, it says plus on top and minus on top and, and plus underneath. So that means cosine A plus B will be given by cosine A, cosine B minus sine A, sine B. And cosine A minus B would be the one with the plus between them. So we're after the one with the plus between them. So we're after the one saying cosine A, cosine B minus sine A, sine B. So this is equal to cosine A, okay, cosine B minus sine A times sine B. Okay, but what we can do here is we can say let the angle be, let's call it A. So in that case, this is going to be cosine of A plus A. And how will that affect this? Well, this will become cosine A and this will become sine A. So this will be cosine A times cosine A minus sine A times sine A. And we know that cosine A times cosine A will be cosine squared or cosine a all squared we could say which is written as cosine squared a the same with sine sine a all squared is the same as sine squared a and cosine a plus a we can write that as cosine of 2a is equal to cosine squared a minus sine squared a now we're almost there but we have to see that in our what we have to prove there's no sine squareds only cosines Right, so I can use the fundamental identity that we should have learned from P two, that sine squared a plus cosine squared a equals one, and we want to replace sine squared a such that it's written in terms of cosine squared a. So if we rewrite this as sine squared a equals one minus cosine squared a. Okay, now that sine squared a can be replaced by one minus cosine squared a. So now we can write this as the cosine of 2a is equal to cosine squared a. Now be careful with this. Put it in a bracket to save yourself from messing up with signs. 1 minus cosine squared a. So now we've got only cosine squared a and cosine 2a. So it looks like we're on the right track. So let's now finish this off. These are all identical too. So you've got cosine squared a. It's going to be minus 1. And minus and minus gives you plus another cosine squared a which therefore gives you exactly what we're looking for that the cosine of 2a is identical to cosine squared a plus cosine squared a which is 2 cosine squared a minus 1 and that's what we had to prove okay so there's the answer to part a we proved this identity using this um you know the addition formula identity and then so this is this is one of the double angle formulae 
All right, so the next part of the question, they're asking us to hence means using this identity that they've proved. Okay, so they're kind of helping us here. This part A is helping us to do part B. They don't have to do that for us. They could have given this question straight away, but they've given us a big clue as to how we should go about answering it. So they're asking us to use algebraic I integration to find the exact value of. So when it says exact value, you have to take note. It means, you know, no decimal values. It should be in terms of like square roots and pies and whatever. Okay. Um, of the integral between pi over 8 and pi over 12 of 5 minus 4 cosine squared 3x with respect to x. Okay, so we have to integrate this. Now, integrating the 5 part is no problem. But integrating 4 cosine squared 3x, you can't integrate this directly. Okay, um, you can think of this as 4 cosine of 3x squared. All right, if you want to integrate something like this, you can't do that unless outside the function is the differential of what's inside the function. If multiplying it is the differential of this. So you can't really um, integrate this unless you have something like sine of 3x outside. Some factor of sine of 3x outside. So multiple of it. So we can't integrate this directly. So we have to try to re rewrite it in a form which can integrate. Now, if I have things in terms of, um, you know, cosine of some an angle without a power, then I can integrate that. So if I rewrite this in terms of um, using the double angle, I can sort this out. So let's try to compare these two together. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, let A be 3x. Okay, so I'm calling the A 3x. So we're going to have here, this is going to be 4 cosine squared 3x. Okay. I can write this as 4 cosine squared a. Okay, so now, or in fact, no, you know what I'll do? I'll do, I'll do it in a simpler way. Forget that. I'll do it in a simpler way. Okay, just, just go ahead and just do it. We'll just apply the formula in a more kind of simpler way. So we have the limits pi over 8 and pi over 12. If you want to integrate 5, that can be integrated, no problem, minus 4 times cosine squared 3x. Okay, so now, we're going to take this. So I'm going to I'm going to take this first. I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to rearrange this so I make cosine squared a the subject because I want to make the I want to replace the co the cosine squared something with um, you know something not involving the squared. So if I if I rearrange this, I'll have um, one plus cosine of two a is equal to two cosine squared a. Right, so it's like I got four cosine squared of an angle, and here I've got two cosine squared of an angle. So what I'm going to do is I'll multiply this by two. So I have two plus two cosine of two a equals four cosine squared a. Right, so I've got something like this, and it can be rewritten this form. Okay, four cosine squared a can be rewritten as two plus two cosine two a. Okay, so I've just rewritten it so it looks Similar to this, it's just the 3x is just the a there, that's all. Right, so I have, I can now put here, I'll put a bracket because there's a minus sign there. So this can be replaced with 2 plus 2 times, okay, the cosine of twice the angle. So whatever angle is here, I have to double it. So this 3x has to become 6x. Okay, and that's going to be integrated with respect to x. Okay, so 2 plus... So four, uh, 2 cosine squared a is 1 plus cosine 2a. So 4 cosine squared a is 2 plus 2 cosine 2a. Just multiply both sides by 2. So therefore, I can rewrite this in this form. So I can write it as 2 plus 2 cosine of double the angle. So here, I'm going to have 2 plus 2 cosine 6x instead of the 4 cosine squared 3x. So I'm just applying the formula to this. Okay, I'm trying to do it in a quicker way than um, the normal way. I mean, normally you, you would say, okay, Cosine squared 2a is equal to 1 plus cosine 2a divided by 2. And then you say, okay, I want to have cosine squared, okay, of, uh, this is 1 plus cosine of 3x over 2, right? Um, sorry, cosine squared a, sorry here. That would be, oh, one second, let me just rewrite that. Normally you would have this, sorry. Let me just re rephrase that. 
you normally have cosine squared a equals 1 plus cosine 2a over 2. All right, and then you say, okay, I want 4 cosine squared a, so multiply both sides by 4. So 4 cosine squared a will be 2 times 1 plus cosine 2a, and then it's the same. Okay, so I just st skipped that step because I saw there's a 2 here, so I want to become a 4. So I multiplied by 2 straight away over there. All right, so now um, we have now rewritten it in a form. We can integrate cosine of 6x. There's no squared with it now. So let's just simplify this a bit before we start to integrate. So you have pi over 8 and pi over 12 as your limits. This is going to be 5 minus 2, which is 3. And you're going to have minus 2. This is minus, and that's minus 2 cosine 6x with respect to x. 5 minus 2 is 3. And that's going to be negative. Now we are ready to integrate. So once we have got everything ready for integration and we start to integrate, please do not write down the integral sign again. Right? We don't write the integral sign now. Okay, we've started to integrate. This becomes 3x. You integrate 3 with respect to x, you get 3x. When you integrate cosine of something, now if you, if you integrate cosine of x, it gives you sine x. Okay, because the differential of sine x is cosine x, the integral of cosine x is positive sine x. So this is going to stay negative. You'll have 2, and this will be the sine of 6x. Then we have to divide by the differential of what's inside the function. So for integration, okay, um, you can check to see is this is the form of something multiplied by its differential. It is because it's a constant times cosine of 6x. 6x is what's inside the function. It can be differentiated. If you differentiate 6x, you get a constant. So you can integrate this by, you can think of it as reversing the chain rule. So cosine 6x becomes sine of 6x, but then divided by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 6. Okay, and then you have your powers, pi over 8 and pi over 12. So this cancels with this, gives you 3. Now we can start substituting the values in of the limit. So we have 3 times pi over 8 minus sine of 6 times pi over 8, which is 3 pi over 4, over 3, okay, minus, and then you're going to put pi over 12 in there, so 3 times pi over 12, okay, minus sine of, you're going to have 6 times pi over 12, which is pi over 2, sine of pi over 2, over 3, okay, so these this will give us our answer. So that's 3 pi over 8 minus, now sine of 3 pi over 4 is going to give us, we can use a calculator for this, but we should understand that this is going to be the second quadrant, okay, and it's going to be um, sine of pi over 4 is like sine of 45, which is root 2 over 2. So this is also going to be root 2 over 2. So you have root 2 over 2 times 3, if the 2 times 3 in the bottom will give you root 2 over 6. Okay, that's going to be root 2 over 2. Then divided by 3, it's going to be root 2 over 6, minus, and this is going to give you, um, I'll just expand the bracket at the same time, 3 pi over 12, okay, which is going to be pi over 4. And this is going to give you plus sine of pi over 2, pi over 2. Now, 90 degrees is 1, so it's going to be my plus 1 third. Okay, so we can make these into the same, this is going to be 3 pi over 12, that's that's pi over 4, right? So we can make these into the same denominator. That's 3 pi over 8 minus 2 pi over 8. And we're going to have these two. We've got minus root 2 over 6 plus 2 over 6. So we end up with pi over 8 minus, um, in fact, we can say plus 2 minus root 2 over 6. I swap these around. 2 minus root 2 over 6. Okay, so I think that's the answer. You can write like you can leave it like this. It says find the exact value of. All right, so there's the answer. You could write it in terms of like in one whole fraction if we wanted to. I guess we could put it all over say twenty four if we wanted to, and that would be three pi plus, and that would be eight minus uh, twenty four times four, the uh, four root two. I guess we could do that if we wanted to, but I think that's fine. Okay, both of them should be the same. Okay, so that's perfectly good. So there we have written, um, or we have the answer written in exact value for the 
answer this is the answer to this question so it's using the um, identity that we found or that we proved earlier okay in order to rewrite this co this squared term for cosine into a term which doesn't have the squared with it basically so we can integrate it so that's the answer to question three i hope that was clear other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region of the screen at the end of the video other questions from the topic of trig identities from p3 can be found in the playlist over here you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link and the video at the top here will help you to uh, find the index from which you can um, you know access my material in an easier way thank you for watching and see you soon